Women's Creative Community Project. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Chair. Thank you also for organizing this forum. I am a Tamil exile in France and I represent the Tamil civil society. One out of five Tamils live abroad presently. The Tamil people in the island of Sri Lanka continue to experience grave violations of human rights, genocide at an accelerated pace. The destruction of the creation of Buddhist areas where no Buddhists lived at the beginning of the conflict that is 35 years ago. Presently, it is the army that continues to occupy Tamil territory and Tamils continue to face acts of genocide since the decolonization in uh, 1948. Came to an end in May 2009 with thousands of people being massacred over a course of six months by the army. Ten years after the war, 14 Sengalese military revisions are placed in the territory in the north and eastern part of the country, where more than 68 hectares of land in the northeast of Sri Lanka are occupied by members of the military and their family. Presently, the Sri Lankan Navy, entirely made up of uh, Senegal, continue to occupy and control several social and economic structures that are essential for the survival of the Tamil people. To conclude, I would like to mention that Sri Lanka is ranked 12th country with more than 90,000 people that have disappeared by enforced disappearance. And to this day, thousands of families are still waiting for truth. I thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The oppression of Tamils in Sri Lanka, including demographic changes, have resulted in Tamil population being reduced to a minority in districts where they were a majority. As per the 1881 census of Trincomalee district, the Tamils constituted 62% of the population. The Muslims accounted for 33% and Sinhalese only 4%. Today, the state-sponsored demographic changes have resulted in the Tamil population being reduced to a mere 33% and the Sinhalese increased to 33%. This deliberate ploy of the Sri Lankan state has reduced the Tamils to a minority in their own homeland. It is not only in Trincomalee, the story is similar in Amparai and Batiklao districts too. Today, one-fourth of the Tamil population lives in the West. Their lands have been occupied by the Singhala forces. For every five Tamils, there is a soldier in the North. In Mulaitevu, for every two civilians, there is an armed soldier. Tamils, who are a majority in their traditional homeland, have lost their basic rights to life, practice their culture, and live as normal human beings. In 2009, the number of registered voters in Jaffna Electoral District that comprises of the administrative district of Jaffna and Kirinochi was 816,005. This figure has dropped to 481,791 uh, in the register of the Electoral District of Jaffna. Sri Lankan Election Department has removed 331,214 names from the list. There is no clarification for these missing voters. Election Commissioner's Department officials said that Jaffna District will have just five MPs representing the voters as opposed to the current number of nine members of parliament. This is an alarming trend as Tamils could become stateless and turn into a minority in their own homeland. The only solution for this problem is to hold a referendum and to recognize the right to self-determination of the Tamils and other nationalities. Thank you. To the Observatoire Mauritanian de Droit de l'Homme. Thank you, Madam Chair. In Sri Lanka, 146,679 Tamils count as unaccounted. 9,000 were widows, a minimum of 20,000 were orphans, 160,000 houses destroyed, according to UN estimates. In any war leading to displacement of civilians, it is the women and children who suffer the most. 
As a minority, the Tamil women have suffered, suffered the most brutalities at the hands of the oppressive Sinhala armed forces. Single women headed families fear the most for the safety of themselves and their children in the pr presence of large number of armed personnel. There have been many instances when their doors have been knocked in midnight and at times sexual favor soaked as more than 50,000 of the 90,000 widows in the war zone are below 40. The Tamil women have been reduced to the status of sexual objects by the military which controls nearly 40,000 of Tamil land. Out of a total land mass of 65,619 kilo. Excuse me, I can't see you. Has somebody tried to interrupt, take the floor? Otherwise, please continue. You still have a minute. Okay. Out of a total land mass of 65,619 kilometers square of land, the Tamils inhabit 18,880 kilometers square of land in the north and east. After May 2009, the defense forces have been occupied more than 7,000 kilometers square of land. This shows that the Tamil dominated areas have been used by the singular forces for their occupation in the name of security concerns, utilizing water, land, forest, fish, apart from polluting the peaceful village environment. Apart from this, it also prevents the local to lead a normal life when they are under the scanner of the occupying defense forces. It has also prevented the return of thousands of displacement people who are still living in camps with friends and relatives. In these circumstances, Tamil women are living like stateless persons in their own homeland. We urge the UN to immediately save these women from deluge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Franco Tamul. Thank you. I'm a medical practitioner with Central Gippsland Health in Victoria in Australia. I spent a fortnight in September on Manus Island, one of Australia's two offshore processing centres, and witnessed firsthand the conditions there. There is an escalating medical and psychiatric emergency amongst the 1,200 stateless refugees scattered across both Nauru and Manus Island. There are 600 adult males indefinitely detained on Manus Island for the last five and a half years. The medical morbidity is broad and local management falls well below any acceptable standard for healthcare within a refugee community. There's deliberate lack of transparency with muzzling of journalists on Manus Island and Nauru and a gag clause enforced on expatriate medical practitioners sent to the region, barring reporting of substandard conditions or offences such as physical and sexual abuse of detainees by local and Australian staff with a two-year prison sentence enforced for whistleblowing. Australia removed primary health care provider IHMS from Manus Island in July and local medical skill and hospital facilities are inadequate to treat the critically ill. There's no ICU, no ventilator, nor staff capable of managing either. The clinic is ill-equipped to deal with medical emergencies such as myocardial infarction, diabetic ketoacidosis or sepsis. Unequal access to tertiary level medical care for refugees that are transferred to Port Moresby's primary hospital is palpably noticeable. Mental health is by far the largest concern on the island and ranges from reactive depression to outright psychosis in previously well men with three deaths by suicide to date. The instance of self-harm and suicide attempts have escalated to daily occurrences with daily cries for help. There's no credible psychiatrist on the island and no inpatient psychiatric services. Any outpatient services provided concur a fortnight's delay and ill-equipped to address the acute mental health needs of suicidal men. There have been 13 deaths in detention, 12 on Manus Island alone, with multiple reports of mistreatment. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's my the unilateral genocide upon Sri Lankan Tamils did not end with a war in 2009. Sri Lankan Tamils faced the same covert torture and discrimination by a fascist and dictatorial state, which accepts no liability for infinite war crimes. Tamils are still treated like second-class citizens and given no governance over their own lands. Military occupation on public and private Tamil properties and ongoing cruel legacy of the nearly three decades of civil war. Government forces have not only occupied Tamil-owned territory to set up military camps and bases, but Tamil farms have been seized by private single landlords with no remuneration. Tamils are thus displaced and left unjustly homeless by an oppressive state. This is an another example of an oppressive single government attempt at diluting Tamil dense region through government acquisition of public land and industrial development designed purely to cater for unequal single-use housing, ownership and work opportunities. Following the exit of British colonization, the single-use seized the region of 
reigns of power over Sri Lanka, declaring Sinhalese the national language. Attempts ensued to forcibly infiltrate Tamil's dense areas. As a consequence, the Tamil population of Trincomalee district and Ampara district in eastern province has decreased from 58 and 37 percentage res respectively in 1911 to 30th, 30th and 20th percentage in 2012. The Tamil percentage in these areas continue to decrease as an increasing number are displaced from homes and properties with enforced dilution of the Tamil population. Madam Chair, I ask the guidance of UNHCR as policymakers how to we as Tamils stop this brutal takeover of our sovereign land and regain our state. I thank you, Madam Chair. And I thank you too. interrupt for one second. I'm, I'm happy to give the time to someone else if I can deliver my speech for segment four at the end of all of this. No? Can I do it now then? Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, as long as you stick to our agenda item. No worries, thank you. So this is written by Behrouz Buchani, who's a refugee on Manus Island, a journalist and a uh, novelist. Thank you everyone for allowing me to talk from Manus. This is a great opportunity for me to say something about Australia's barbaric policy of exiling refugees. We are about 600 refugees that came to Australia by boat more than five years ago and then exiled to Manus Island. We were in a real prison for over four and a half years. They have since closed it and transferred us 35 kilometres away. After years of activism and writing about this policy, I understand that the border control regime has been established based on a colonial way of thinking. The exploitation of Papua New Guinea and Nauru by Australia in order to practice these atrocities is a form of colonialism. They exiled us here and are saying that they do not have a responsibility for the people languishing on the islands. When someone dies on Manus and Nauru, they say it's the responsibility of the island and not a matter for Australia. When New Zealand offers to take us, Australia says we will not allow this to happen. I call this political hostility taking. In such circumstances, we are outside the scope of national laws as humanitarian and international conventions are broken. But on the other side, we are all victims under local law. I have witnessed many deaths, suicides and self-harm over the past five years and have a profound understanding of the suffering experienced by the people on Manus and Nauru and how they have been forever damaged mentally and physically. It is more than darkness and cruelty. I know many people who have been separated from their families and children. Others have children that have spent their whole lives inside a prison camp. I know many young people who have lost their dreams and wasted their skills. I ask how any human, in this case a refugee, can be thus exiled to such a stateless existence where they have recourse to no law. In this situation, a human being is living as something in between a human and another kind of animal. How is the Australian government able to keep 2,000 innocent people, especially children, under these conditions in remote prisons for years in an age of revolutions in information technology? How can the government convince Australian society to maintain this policy when so much damning evidence is available? The Australian public is no longer silent on this barbaric policy. It is not the first time in modern Australian history that the government is perpetuating this kind of fascism. The stolen generations reflect what the Australian government has done and still continues to do to First Nations people. The government has reinvented these barbaric policies at the beginning of the 21st century, but I'm this sorry. time inflicted upon... Thank you. Thank you. And I will give the floor now to the...